Today I'm going to give you something for absolutely free. So what I'm going to be doing today is doing a full demonstration from beginning to end. No cuts, no fast forwards, nothing. And that's 8x10, and that's how I know it's probably going to be pretty short. And this little board, I don't know, I just I found, found this at one of the stores and uh, figured it, since it was universal primed already, it, it would work for, for oil painting. Because if it's universal primed, it means it's good for oil or acrylic. Since I'm doing oil, it'll be just fine. It's got a pretty smooth texture. I felt it at the store. It feels just like gesso, so that's why I'm going to go with it. All right, so let's get started. Here's what I'm going to be painting. So this photo I just took at a local concert, and I thought this guy looked great. In fact, I think a lot of stuff from a Symphony looks really cool, so I'm very interested in painting a series of this. Here's my brush. It's just a bristle brush. It's no, nothing special. Just, I think it's like size six or something, but I, I size my brush according to the size of the canvas. If I was painting a bigger canvas, I'd use a bigger brush, and uh, there's nothing special. You don't have to use anything special. So I'm starting out with brown, as I usually do. Uh, this time I'm using brown mixed with a little bit of purple. Just trying to get the gesture in there, just trying to lay things out so that I don't end up, like, finishing the head or something, for example, only to find out that it's going off the edge of the canvas. This is... This is the stage where I just try to figure out if it's going to actually fit on the size of canvas that I've chosen. I'm trying to get all the the angles correct and the measurements of this. Um, I think it's a, a bass or, <laughs> or a cello, one or the other. Um, but it where that's that nice diagonal line from the top right down to the bottom left, um, it's a pretty easy thing to to sight size without too much effort. And then all his body, the gesture is relatively straightforward. And I love the way his his legs are also at, a, at an interesting angle. And right away, I'm just gonna go, jump right in with the colors, with darks, because I really don't need a whole lot to to indicate detail in this in the gestural stage, the that little block in part that I just did. Uh, there's no reason to to keep on doing more in that. I just might as well go straight into color. And as I go along, I can fix things a little bit if I need to. The the angles are mostly right, but you know if something needs to be extended or moved a little bit, it's it's relatively easy just to do it in the next stage. I I try to try to move on as quickly as possible, knowing that I I'm in control. I can always just change change things as I need to. It's it's oil paint. It's really easy to push around and cover up if I need to. And I'm trying to go for all the get all the darks in there as early as possible. The darks are probably the the easiest well the lightest lights and darkest darks are the easiest to to judge when there's nothing else on the canvas as far as color and value goes. And I'm just simplifying these into into the same uh, same value. Getting a little bit of the chair in there and following these shadows down, leaving room on the leg and the shoulder, or not not the shoulder, but the, the that sleeve up there um, for that lighter color where the light is shining. Where I see these other dark parts in the scene, I might as well get those in there as well. So this color I'm using isn't black, it's it's brown and purple still. Well, a little bit of a little bit more brown now and <laughs> tiny tiny bit of yellow and white just because I see that there's a little bit of that in that background color. But generally speaking, it's it's still just different uh different recipe is made up of just the brown and and purple. This background color is pretty much the same in the background, which, yeah, or, you know, from from one side to the other throughout the whole background. But it does get darker up in this corner, and I'm going to try to, you know, if something looks totally the same from one side of the painting to the, to the other, I really want to try to emphasize the differences in it. I'm also looking at the fact that if I were to do this over on the right side of him, 
if it was going to be any lighter than that, like how I did it on the left side, then the lighter parts of the instrument and his hand and other things wouldn't wouldn't show up quite as well. So I'm I'm thinking ahead a little bit, trying to get that to to be the right value so that the other parts that are important stand out. Now I'm deciding just kind of on the fly how much detail I'm going to put in the background. I could make him look like he was a total soloist on you know on a stage all by himself, but I kind of like the shapes that that are created by the the people and and other instruments and just different random element you know ele things <laughs> in the in the background. I think they I can get them to work in my favor. So whenever I look at reference, I'm always trying to get it to to just give me ideas. I I don't need to be a slave to what I see. Um unless it was an absolutely perfect picture to begin with, but that's very very rare. But I, but again, I'm I'm just not trying to 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 copy the reference. I'm just using it to refer to, hence the name reference. It's not not something that I'm a slave to. Yeah, I, I think I made the point. So I'm just seeing what, what little shapes and colors and things that are around, and if they work for me, then I put them in, and if they don't, then then I, you should feel free to leave them out, and that's what I'm doing. This is a fun color, still just in that brown tone, using my burnt sienna. Tiny bit of yellow in it just laying it in. It's all kind of the same color. There's a little bit of it up, of that same color up here, but but then I've got that piece of metal that that is going to be totally, excuse me, totally reflective. So I'm going to paint over that in just a minute. But uh for now it's just nice to get that color in there and then I can uh, kind of judge where the where the details and highlights are going to be. So this color with the more or less just yellow with a little bit of the burnt sienna in it. This whole time I haven't had to wash my brush because I'm still kind of thinking of it as a lay-in even though I'm getting into some pretty detailed uh, values and colors or not not detailed that's the wrong name wrong word uh, I'm getting into accurate colors and values but the more I think of this whole process as just kind of kind of casual, just sort of making little changes that make it more and more accurate. And and the word I used before, just block in, you know, the more I think of it as just a block in stage every step of the way, the more fun it is, the more loose I can force myself to be, um, the more gestural, and hence the more... Uh, I don't it, it just gives a good feeling. I want it to to feel immediate. So at this point I can either choose to to continue to put the highlights on the instrument or I can start going into the the other um you know the parts that I haven't even started yet and it doesn't really matter. I'm this close to being finished on the instrument and I've got that color on my brush so I might as well might as well finish that. It's sort of interesting to think of how, you know, if you cover up with your with your hands or your fingers the the surrounding areas of of that instrument, um, you know, to to the point where you can't tell that it's a person. That instrument itself is just nothing more than kind of random abstract shapes. And it's interesting how how if you were to zoom in on any part of this it would just be random abstract shapes. But as a whole, it, you know, our brain finishes the picture and, and sees begins to see a person playing an instrument. I don't know, it's just kind of magical. I love this process. And impressionism is is more and more magical to me. So you saw that I, I painted just in, indications of the instruments in the background. There are some kettle drums on the right and another uh, bass or cello behind this one. 
And these skin, to skin tones are, in this case, I always like to put that little disclaimer in there because skin tones are never just, there's no, no such thing as an accurate like skin tone straight from the tube because everything is different depending on the lights around it. And the person, obviously. Um, but here I used basically white with burnt sienna and yellow. And I, I might have put a just a tiny tad of uh, of some red. But under these warm lights, it, it didn't really need much of that. So just burnt sienna and white is my go-to usually, but in different in different ratios depending on the light situation. Then I push it to a cool or warm or whatever it needs to be. And actually that, that skin tone is pretty close to what this color is generally on this chair, this kind of honey colored wood tone. But I want to, I want to make these, the legs of the chair, not just be like solid mechanical looking lines, but I want to, um, as it goes up, I can see that there's more of a shadow up there under the seat of the chair. So I'm pushing harder at the bottom and then lifting my brush just a little bit as I, as I bring it up. So it kind of drags and puts less and less paint on there. See, it's so just really soft, slowly lifted up. And then it gives the impression that there's a shadow falling softly um, up at the, the top part. And of course the front of the stage is basically the same color. You can see as I drag that along, and this is why I don't like to uh, clean my brush, as I was dragging that yellow along on the bottom there, and then sort of twisted my brush the other direction, it varies the color, and so in general I still get that one uh, local color, that same kind of honey colored wood that was on the chair, but with some variety, just by having that stuff left over on my brush. Okay. Maybe I'll get get this other stuff covered up on his suit. It's kind of a warm gray made up of basically brown and purple and a little bit of white and I don't know. It just you never know what you need as far as color goes until you get it on there. I'm pretty good at matching but I never really know if it's accurate until I get on the canvas. And that should be your your rule of thumb too, is don't worry about getting the absolute perfect color mixed on your palette because you won't really know, you can't know until it's up there um, being compared with what's already there. That, for that hair, it was basically the same color as the, the light parts on the suit, but just a tiny bit more brown. So a little bit less purple, just very, uh, not subtly, but impressionistically <laughs> indicating the, uh, the eye socket and the, you know, the shadow on the side of the nose. And I, I sometimes use my finger cause the brush is too big and you may be asking, well, why not just use a smaller brush? Well, that slows me down, but also I have a tendency to, uh, the brush has a tendency to get a little bit too detailed in an, and in an impressionistic work such as this, that would really stand out. It would be far too detailed. It would, it would, it would look out of place. Get the shadows up here. That little uh, curly Q edge of, of the top. Whenever I'm going along, I'll see little things that I, you know, I'll be mixing a color for, for one thing and then, then end up using, using it somewhere else. My brain's constantly like kind of jumping ahead two or three steps or two or three brush strokes, I should say, uh, while I'm preparing for one that I already was mixing for, you know what I mean? If, if I see that color or something that needs to be done more than another thing, then, uh, then I'll just go ahead and bounce around a little bit. There's no, 
there's no set uh, rule for how to how to proceed. It's just kind of going from one thing. Yeah, I can finish one thing and then move on to the next or bounce around as needed. And here I'm just softening some of these edges and getting rid of some of the white. Also, notice how the where I already painted the the leg uh, it sort of uh, turns into the the shoe, the one that's up on the chair a little bit. It's lifted up. It it's darker down at the shoe, and then it it's dark where the the bottom of the leg is facing downward, and then. You see the different planes there? The the part of the leg that's facing upward is getting more light and then, then it turns and faces downward so it's getting darker and anyway, I, I love little subtle things like that where um where one thing connects to another but but then it uh, it shows accurately the the difference in planes, you know, the different angles that, that are facing the light in different ways. I need to get these shadows in there and carve in around here just you know this is what i was talking about before where i can make little changes in the drawing as i go along and as i get closer to the end of the painting i can sort of fine tune the edges and just everything that just balancing it out as it needs making it better and better more accurate but the whole while I'm trying to keep it pretty impressionistic, not getting stuck on any one detail. I like right now that the leg that's more forward that we can see better is is really accurate and it it has a nice gesture. I just just really like it. It comes forward. It's uh, the the values on the planes are are accurate. I like how that contrasts with the with the instrument, and just this whole gesture is very interesting. I'm really liking it, and I don't want to detract from those by by putting too much detail in other spots. I'm just trying to get the get the shadows to be more accurate back there, and I think everything that I do now is going to well, every everything from the beginning to the end is supposed to just make it make the main message be be more clear and make the best part stand out and have the other parts just support that best part. I don't know. The the best part isn't anything particular except for what you, whatever you want it to be. There's no rule for it. And that, as I'm painting, that's usually when I decide what's going to what's going to be the best part or not. The most important part. So I dragged my finger down on the, the leg of that chair just to let it touch the ground. <laughs> just taking a step back to, to look at this for a minute, see what it needs. This is really the point at which I don't want to do too much to it. Of course, I can see some things that really need to be worked on, but I want to decide and think ahead just a little bit. So I've got my other brush and I'm just going to hit some of these highlights real quick. I think this is probably too light. It looks pretty light in the photo, but that may have been a little too light. So where I'm doing the highlights, where they stand out anyway, uh, that's where I I use a different brush. This is you know, a very fine, smooth brush. It leaves a sm smooth stroke. And oh, I, don't, I don't mind this now. Now that it, you know, I was feeling too light at first, but now that I softened that edge, it doesn't stand out quite as much. And he is under some nice bright lights. So it's certainly, I think, I think that's right. And, uh, finally getting that hand to look like a hand without doing too much to it. I don't want to get super, super detailed, but I want to have the light bouncing off the different planes of the hand in the right ways. I think it may be time for the actual, like, really, really shiny highlights all over the instrument and, you know, other places where it 
just really is bright white, crisp and clean. So I'm going even brighter still, even whiter than, uh, than on the face and hands. So this is just pretty much like 99% white with just a little bit of yellow in it. You saw me lift my brush there as I was dragging it to indicate a, a really sharp part, and then that highlight sort of spills across the the wood of the instrument from one side to the other. On its own, this this side view of this instrument wouldn't look like an instrument at all, probably, but in the context, it, it it's pretty clear what it is. Now for this part that, that I mentioned at the beginning, it's uh, just gleaming white. I think it's probably brass or something, but it's reflecting just the whitest of white light. Under normal circumstances, I probably wouldn't want necessarily to have the highest contrast be there. I don't know, but but it but it shows very clearly that it is an instrument and it shows how bright the lights are. If there if there are any rules in art, they they can be bent to your needs and to the individual needs of that painting anytime, painting or drawing, whatever it happens to be. And there's there's his hand on the on the other side holding his bow. And while I'm there, I can get this little blob back there to look more like a guy playing a violin. And it doesn't need to be detailed, and in fact if I made it any more detailed than this, it would stand out like a sore thumb. I just really want those background elements to stay in the background. Give this face to look a little bit more like a face. Now I could I could bring this to I could make his hands and his face completely detailed, lifelike, if I wanted to. I think with this one though, I just want to keep it nice and fresh and quick, like like a study. I want it to feel more like I painted it from life as he was playing than I, d I don't want it to look like a finished photo. But uh, speaking of finished, there it is. And here we are just a few days later. The painting has had a chance to dry and I'm gonna, I'm gonna spray it with a little light coat of retouch varnish. And there it is, nice and shiny again. All right, back in the studio, um, I wanted to mention what I'm using. It, I think I called it a retouch varnish. I'm actually just using this brand of varnish, Kmar by Krylon, um, and I just give it a really light coat. I've used this for years and years, and I don't necessarily endorse it or swear by it, but it's worked for me. Sorry, I've got my <laughs> 3D printer going on in the background. Anyway, well, that's it. I mean, that's, that's how I do a really quick study in an impressionistic way. And I really like painting that way, and then I also like painting in other ways, other times. But I hope you enjoyed this, this particular way <laughs> this time. I hope it was helpful to you. If, if nothing else, I hope it was encouraging to you um, to get get painting anything. You can paint it quick, you can paint it impressionistically, it can have magic, it can, it can have soul when it's painted quickly like this. Um, it's just a lot of fun and I encourage you to do it. Don't be too afraid of making mistakes. As I mentioned several times during the video, you can make little mistakes in one stage and easily fix it in the other stages and just just paint, don't be, don't be afraid of it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you have any uh, ideas, things you'd like to see me demonstrate or talk about, let me know, and I will be with you again shortly. Thanks for joining me. Also, be sure to check out my website. It's trentgoodmanson.com. Be sure to spell it correctly. 
and you can sign up there for my mailing list if you'd like. And when I send it out, it will include things like new works that I've been doing, maybe new galleries that I've gotten in, um, as well as workshops and classes that I will be doing. And I will be doing workshops and classes soon. So as I plan those, uh, you'll be the first to know if you're part of my mailing list. All right, well, talk to you later. Bye.